Hello everybody, this is Gail, and today I want to show you something that I've been wanting to do for a while and just haven't. Um, I'm going to show you how to carve on baked polymer clay. And what I'm going to do, I was thinking I was going to do something simple like maybe a, a leaf design. And with it being fall, I just, you know, I just was thinking about a leaf, fall colors. So I went into my scrap, and I pulled out some of the ends from the uh, cane that we did last week. And these are in yellows and oranges. There's a little bit of blue. Um, probably want to leave a little bit, put a little bit more orange over here. But this is just scrap, and I'm going to just kind of press all this together. And if you want, you can marble it. You can, uh, I probably will do something with that because I don't need the, all that black. But um, let's see how we do if I just twist it a little bit. And you don't have to twist it. You can twist it. You can marble it. I'm just trying to kind of get cover up some of that black. So I think that will work okay. And um, I made sure when I put this together originally that it didn't have any air in it. Because air and polymer clay just do not match. And you want to form a shape that you would like to use for a pendant. And I was thinking, I had, I've got a piece that I've already baked. But I'm thinking I will cut a shape. You know, make this a little flatter. Um, something that would look good with a... with a leaf and I'm just I'm sorry I'm looking at my shapes over here and nothing is really grabbing me right now so let me look again get out my other cutters uh, how about a pretty teardrop now these are the Sculpey cutters the graduated cutters so I'm going to get the teardrop and I'm going to use that And it's really not important. I'm going to take this, I think I'll just cover up my black. The black is going to be used a little bit later. But I think I just want to flatten this a little bit, just to make it a little bit smoother. And then cut my shape, and this way I can cut out the black, but I want some colors. That's pretty. I think I'll do this. And I'm just going to cut out the shape that I want. And actually I should have used a piece of plastic. Let me do that again with the plastic and round these edges. And this will cut your plastic probably, but it will kind of make these edges a little rounder. It won't be quite so blunt, sharp. And I'm going to put this away in case I need some more, but I'm going to put it back just to get it off my table. So then you might want to just make sure your edges are the way you want it. And ideally, I should have put this on a piece of patty paper. For those of you that might be asking, patty paper is, you can look at, look for it online. It comes, let's see, this is from Bagcraft Paper Con, and it just says regular weight patty paper, and the number is L55, if that helps you any. But you can Google it. I bought this from someone else, so I don't know where she got it. But I was just looking at these. Those look like pretty fall colors, don't you think? 
So now I've got my shape cut out. I am going to cover it with black. So I'm going to do the bottom, and I'm going to what I'm going to do is lay it on the bottom. Let me move this over a little bit. Lay it on the bottom, and then I'm going to use a craft knife to cut around. It doesn't have to be exact. You just want to make sure the back of it is going to get covered. There you go. And see, it's it overhangs a little bit, but that's all right. Um, might want to trim some of this off. You don't a little over, overhang is fine, but you don't want too much because you'll just have to try to smooth it out later. So the less you leave on there now, the easier it will be to smooth it a little bit later. Excuse me if my hair is in the frame. There you go. And you see I've got a bubble. Can you see that? See my bubble? There's two bubbles. So at this point, since it, well, it maybe is a little bit more stuck than I thought it was. I'll take this one, just poke a hole in the middle and then press around. And then same thing with this one. I might do two holes since this is a pretty big bubble. And just press it out. And we'll cover up those little marks when we go to the next step. So let me just trim this off. Just because it's easier to work with if you don't have a lot of scraggly lines on it. And I'll put it back on the patty paper. And get rid of this plastic now. And just pick a pretty side of your black. Because you know, just like everything else, black or white clay just seems to pick up everything. So even when you're being really careful, it still will pick up bits and pieces of things. Now what I didn't tell you, and I apologize for that, and also I wanted to tell you, if you hear some strange noises, I have some workmen here and putting in a new heat pump. Yes, I had to do a new heat pump. That's another long story. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. I'm getting a loan to pay for it. So again, please visit my Etsy shop. But I'm going to cut out a little bit. I'm not cutting the, the design yet, because but this was so, you know, sticking out so far. That it was hard to get this down. Now, you can pick it up at this point and see how you can see the rim and just press this down. Now this clay that I'm using, the scrap clay, is about a quarter of an inch thick. And this black clay is rolled at a number five. I rolled it kind of thin because you don't want it very thick. So let me just trim a little bit. And just make sure you can get your edges smoothed out. That almost did it by itself. Now you see here where I tried to pull this up, I pulled up a little piece of the end that was covering up the yellow. That's the good thing about having this. You can just pull this down over that yellow and trim it. But don't try to do the whole thing at one time. 
and then just pull that over there so that yellow is covered up. It's much easier to trim if you get a section that's the way you want it and then trim that section. So let me just trim this piece off. And just smooth your edges. Have a little bit more on that one. And I'm going to come across the top. And just mold it around. I may even use my blade on this one just because I can come straight down with it instead of trying to trim around. And of course my blade had clay on it from clay cutting the scrap. But I got it off. And now is when you want to smooth all of your seams. Make sure that, you know, like here where the seams are, you can just rub it with your finger a few times and the seams will cover up. Make sure your edges are the way you want them. I don't want these to be really sharp, so I'm just making sure that they bend in or they, they're not sharp. I don't, I'm not bending them in. I'm just kind of, you know, softening the angle there with my thumb. And look at that. I got another bubble. Getting bubbles is very easy to do, and it's very easy to fix them. So if you don't get rid of your bubbles before you bake it, it's going to not be pretty. Now, for texture, let me put this over here. For texture, I'm going to use, this is a piece of fun foam. And I got the fun foam in shapes, but look at the texture on this. Can you see the texture? The light's too bright. But there's a texture to this, so I'm going to use this to texture the back. Maybe even smooth the sides a little. And then lastly, I will put it on the front. And I want it to be kind of straight up and down on the front. So I'm going to try. I don't know how successful I'll be. But try to press this texture in kind of evenly across the top. There you go. So there's my cabochon. Now you're asking me, but I thought we were going to carve this. Well, I need to bake this. And um, uh, you need to bake it. I baked mine for an hour. Uh, I've got another one here that I baked. It's a different shape because I, after I, this baked, I, I found that this was too, too thick and too big for a pendant, so that's why I went with the thinner. But this will be the same thing after it's baked. You have a baked piece of clay. Now what I'm going to do is take a marker or a pen. Oh, if it was a different color, I would use a, um, a Sharpie, but I don't have a Sharpie that's a colored that's here. I've got one in my closet, but I don't want to do go hunting around for stuff. So I'm going to just take something here. Now, a leaf is what I planned on. Excuse me, I've got the same colors inside. But being long and narrow, I don't know how I'm going to draw this. 
So what I think I'll do is get me a piece of card, uh, index card, and I'm going to play around. And I might even just trace around this a couple times. Of course, mine is going to be smaller because this is going around the outside. But I'll do a couple of these just so I can kind of see what I want to do as far as drawing the leaves on here. For this one, I would probably do something different, maybe a flower because of the shape. But I want to start with something simple. So that's what I'm going to do. I want to show you, you know, the simple start so you can learn the basics. Then after this, maybe I'll do another tutorial on how to do a more detailed carving. So I'm going to draw a picture that I want to trans that I want to carve onto my my piece here. And this is not going to be transferable. This is just going to kind of help me draw something out to see how I like it. So I think maybe I might do, instead of one leaf, maybe I'll do parts of two leaves. Maybe I'll come out like this. And that will be one leaf with a stem and veins. And then maybe I'll do another one coming this way. Same thing. These are just partial drawings. And maybe just have like a side of one here. So you're not going to have a stem, but you'll have the veins coming out. So that looks that looks okay. But I probably should have started with a flatter one like the one I made today. But so I'm going to look here and I'm just going to start drawing. Let me start with the big one here. Let me just start maybe there. And this is just a gel pen. And just draw a leaf in your veins. And that didn't come down as far as the other one. So this one I will do pretty close to the bottom. So I'll have something there. And this is the one that's just the, the veins. Because looking at this, the leaf is actually over here. That's just part of it. And I will take over here there. How's that? So that's going to be the design we're going to carve. Now what I use to carve with is a speedball product, and I've got two of them. And I know I got one of them at Michael's with a coupon, and the other one I ordered online. But they come with several different sizes of carvers. You can get the round carver, or the V. they've got a large and a small V carver, and a large and a small round carver. And this is two sets, because I have two cutters. But I put all of the things in the same box. And I'm going to start with my... See, these are my cutters. See, I've got two different sizes. There's a big one and the little one. And I think what I'm going to do is carve with the bigger one, the bigger V. And I'm just going to start wherever. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start up at the point and I'm going to just cut out this isn't going to be as easy because you 
you just start to cut and the the depth of your cut is going to determine the amount of color that you're going to see now maybe this maybe a number five wasn't thin enough because that's what i did on here and i'm having to cut quite a bit to get down to that so maybe another color i mean a, a thinner thickness maybe go to a seven or a nine go as thin as you can and still hold your be able to manage your clay and then just carve on your lines and expose that color underneath let's see my I kind of curved before my picture did so I'll just have to go with my curve and you can refine it after you do it a little bit see I've got some orange and some yellow but I'm using the big V or the deeper V to make all this the same width and I'm wiping all of the ink off on my fingers so I think it comes this way like I said I'm Probably should have used something other than a gel pen, but that's what was handy. And you just keep carving until you get the color that you want. And like I said, this black probably should have been a little bit, a little bit thinner. because I shouldn't have to carve this much to expose the color. It's just one of these slow and steady wins the race type of tutorials. Just take it slow and it's easier to carve a little bit at a time than to take too much off and then you can't fix it. All right, and now I'm going to take the little the little one. And see this is really little. You see that V? And carve some veins in it. Cuz you don't want the veins to be as deep or as wide as the outside See, can you see those colors coming through? I really like this process. I don't like to carve anything towards me, but this is... And do the same thing over here. Of course, my lines are gone, but I can see where parts of it are. Let's see. How am I going to do this safely? believe I have one there it's much easier if you can hold this down the only problem is 
in order for you to see it, it's not really at an angle that I can see very well. So it's not usually this difficult to carve, but like I said, I'm at a weird angle because I want you to see what I'm doing. about that. The workman needed to come in for a minute and ask me a couple questions, so I took a took the adva took advantage of the time and went ahead and carved this other leaf with the smaller V, and I think I like that better. I hadn't used the big V before, but I think like this here is just too wide for what I wanted. It lo still looks good. It's just not what I wanted. So I'm using the small V. And I just wanted to show you with the small one, the little tiny one, it's best to do it a little at a time. Like, don't try, and any, or any of them, just try to do a small little carve. And I'm trying to, this is that leaf that's off the edge of the pendant. And just get your basic line in there. I put this on. This is actually a shower glove that I bought, I think, at the dollar store. But I bought it for the texture so I could just take clay in, in my hands like this. And it would give it this wonderful texture. But I kept nicking my hands with this carver. And it's because, one thing, I'm at a weird angle. But... Um, but see, anyway, I just decided it would be safer for me. So if you see, it's a very thin line right now. And let me just take this all the way down. It's a very thin line, so then you can go over it again. And this time I'm going to come towards me, just so I can see what I'm doing. And just carve a little bit more. You just go a little bit deeper, and you just do this over and over again until you get to the point where you are comfortable where or how you like it and some of you might want stronger colors it didn't stay on yeah I did thought I'd missed it but that's that's the line for the stem I mean for the vein so I, you know just keep going a little bit I like to I want a little bit more color so I'm going to keep going until I get down to the color But as long as you've got your initial track in there, the carver pretty much stays in that track. I still don't have the amount of color I want. So I'm thinking, like I said, this was a number five. The black was rolled to a number five on my pasta machine. So I'm thinking maybe you, we might need to go to a number seven or even a number nine if your machine goes that thin. But you can see why now I didn't want to leave a lot of black in there because with the outside being black and then you carve into it if the only color you see is black it's not very interesting. But I'm going to go ahead and finish carving. I don't want you to have to sit here and watch all of this and I'll be back in just a minute. 